US states and Canadian territories in which a dinosaur species has been discovered. And there seems to be a literal straight line for these T-Rexes out here. I mean, it could honestly be alive somewhere in New Mexico. I wouldn't be surprised. Who knows what happens in New Mexico. Next, we have a Triceratops, which doesn't quite have the same range as the T-Rex. But again, these are only states and territories in which they have been found in. Maybe they are here in other places. We just haven't seen them yet. I always imagine these as like the nice dinosaurs. Next up, we have the Pachyrhinosaurus. Is this one of those flying ones? They definitely like the cold, it seems. What am I talking about? They like the cold, it seems. Uh, the Earth looks completely different when the dinosaurs were around. That's kind of an important thing to note, I think. Although it is a little bit weird. I mean, the U.S. has always bordered Canada, even like uh, 50 million years ago. And it's not like all these other states like broke apart and smashed into each other. Like, they've always been together. So there must be other reasons why they're only being found in this area. Okay, this is the first time I've ever seen a Pachyrhinosaurus. There's the Brachosaurus, which has only been found in Utah and Colorado. Wait, I thought this was going to give me the correct pronunciation of this dinosaur's name. No. Well, I guess it could be. That's just how you say their name in dinosaur. Oh man, these are everyone's favorite, yet they've only been found in two states. Look at this one that went to New Jersey and then straight up died. Been there before, man. My dude just couldn't hang over there. Average money spent on weddings in the US. Let's get the biggest one out of the way, $77,000. I was going to make a joke, that's as much as a house, but no, no, it is not in California. You need like a million for that in California. Meanwhile, in the state of Wyoming, which doesn't exist, it's only 9000 this is insane because this map is going by the average. So these numbers aren't even at the highest peak. They're just on average putting all of the weddings together. I have a feeling like when it comes to California, like a lot of people are under $77,000. There's just like extremely wealthy weddings that people are like spending a million dollars on. That's really pulling up that average. The East Coast isn't quite as bad as California, but it's definitely getting up there. Wow. Why is New Jersey more than New York? Maybe upstate kind of pulls down Manhattan. Love the complete random outlier here with South. South Dakota. Does South Dakota just have like a lot of rich people going here to get married and they just leave afterwards? That would explain some stuff. I wonder if there's any correlation between some of the states that might have like bigger families. If you have a big family, you're gonna have to spend a lot on your wedding. Small family, you don't have to spend that much. I'm not really noticing that trend here though, to be honest. French expressions based on other nationalities. I'm trying to think of some ones that we have in English. It's all Greek to me when you don't understand anything. I can't remember anything else. So the French say a German quarrel or basically a a pointless discussion. <laughs> Okay, France. To be drunk like a pole. Uh, okay. Well, all right, France. All right. To slip away the English way or to flee secret. Oh, is this a reference to Dunkirk? They also have the English have landed said during a womb. Okay. To take a Scottish shower or events or impressions that suddenly shift from positive to negative. A Roman's job, a monumental task. Okay. Well, so they like Italy, I guess. To talk like a Spaniard cow or not being at ease in a foreign language. The Spanish inn or a place or situation where no one can find anything and everything. Okay. So France clearly does not like many people they surround. To send to the Greek calends or to postpone indefinitely. Definitely. To go get lost at the Greeks or to be abruptly rejected. To be the Turkish head is to be the target or of blame. Okay. To be strong like a Turk, to be uh, pumped very strong. Okay, so France likes some of these places, doesn't like a majority of these other places though. That's the vibe I'm getting. The Russian mountains, quick variation between two extremes. Some are not as bad as others, clearly. Maybe all the memes memeing on France aren't so bad after all. I guess they've been doing it to all of us for way longer. I uh, hear some more English ones and Irish goodbye. I have to admit I'm guilty of this. Oh, uh, and then I've also heard of Go Dutch. City street network orientation of some of the most famous cities in the world. So obviously it seems the majority of some of these really famous cities like Chicago, Miami, and Minneapolis, they just have their streets going pretty much north, south, east, west. Seems like the most normal thing to do. Well, specifically a lot of the places that are doing that are from the US, and that's because our cities aren't that old. But interestingly, the older the city gets, the more wild it really becomes. For example, a place like Budapest, for instance, um, it just just kind of doing whatever. Or a place like Kiev. For some of these really old places, you know, they probably built their streets and their cities way before they had access to compasses or where north was. So you kind of just made the roads however you wanted. Same thing for Paris. Like, it's just kind of doing things. Like how Sydney, not that old, yet they still are not, like, perfectly going. M maybe because, oh, you know what? They are living in the land down under. That's probably why. So yeah, some of the most radical of them all, like Moscow, Istanbul, London, uh, yeah, they tend to be some of the oldest. And then for some 
some reason there's Charlotte, North Carolina and whatever they're doing over there. I've got a lot of questions. You know what? I gotta give them an A for creativity. At least it's not just a boring grid system. The world's largest cities by population and completely unsurprisingly most of the top 10 is dominated by China and India. Those are the two most populated countries on earth. But this first list is talking about city proper or based on their administrative boundaries. If you go by the definition of urban area which ignores territorial boundaries and just looks at how big the city goes continuously. We then have Japan sitting at number one, Jakarta, Indonesia at two, Delhi, India three, and a lot more diversity, at least in the top 10. New York doesn't even get in the top 10 though, they're in 11th. This is by just like eyeballing it, basically. Then finally, there's the final definition or metropolitan area. This is just defined by official organizations for statistical purposes usually. Still Tokyo, Japan is number one, and Jakarta is still number two, Delhi is still number three. <laughs> Seoul, South Korea really gets up there though. And then New York finally slips in the top 10. I love this post because it really shows just how hard it is to define a city nowadays. And it's only gonna continue to get more and more difficult as cities continue to sprawl, city sprawl. The city proper is the smallest, the urban area is the yellow, which is kind of medium. And then here's the metropolitan. One thing's for sure, Japan's population density is no joke. Greater Tokyo with nearly 40 million people living just right here. Countries and their preferred decimal separators, for example, example, we here in the US, if we're talking money, we just use a dot right there. Or if we're talking about the pi formula, 3.4, it's still, it's a dot that we use in the US. But in most of Europe, they actually use the comma instead. The comma, which actually is typically used in the US when talking about thousands. You do three comma zero 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 if you want three thousand. I'm so embarrassed to mention this. Throughout my travels through Europe for two months, I don't think I noticed this once ever. Like, I don't think I even really paid attention to it until like a couple months ago. I actually just recently reviewed a screenshot about this because this number in the US means you have 3,000 US dollars. Meanwhile, this number in the EU would mean that you have $3. Those symbols are very important as you can see. Then there's the Middle East which actually use an Arabic comma. It's pretty much just the same except a little bit longer it appears. And then there's just a couple places that do both like Canada, also Switzerland, which I don't even know why Switzerland would do both. Peru, which uses both. That seems like a really complicated thing. Like, I don't really care what symbol you use. You probably just shouldn't use both. You know, that could be like extremely confusing. Several countries ask their citizens, would you fight for your own country? A poll held around the world. The place with the most amount of yeses was Morocco at 94%. And then Fiji in second, also at 94%. I didn't realize Fiji went down like that. A couple of the others is Pakistan, Vietnam, Bangladesh. Uh, where is India? Oh, India's up here, but not as high is Bangladesh and Pakistan. Then we have the other countries which are pretty high. You still have like half of your people saying yes. There's Mexico and Russia, Ukraine. There's China, Turkey, Finland, Philippines. And we're getting into some more worrying territory. Only 25 to 50% of your respondents saying they would fight for their country. The US is only at 44%. I mean, I guess if you have a lot of people, it doesn't matter because 25% of a lot of people is still a lot of people. Canada's at 30%, which is actually higher than I thought. They're trying to fight us though, I'm thinking with that number. UK only at 27%. Meanwhile, there's the very bottom, anywhere between 0 and 25, Japan. Japan, Japan's been taught all about the horrors that, well, you know what, actually, Japan remembers the horrors. I don't know if they've been taught about it, but they know what they did in Asia. And there's the Netherlands, uh, Germany, which has a very, that's so interesting that both Axis members end up really low on the list. And then there's Italy too, it's all three of them down here. I guess you could even consider Austria. This is probably one of those things that definitely changes depending on the year that's going on and the events that are taking place. It's because your country's really high or really low right now. It doesn't mean it can't drastically change in like a year. Probably all depends on the circumstances. Comparing the ranking of today's largest economies. So in the last 23 years, there hasn't been any movement at all from the US because we've just stayed at number one. It's not all that interesting there. But the second place country, China, which started in six back in the year 2000, has really exploded. And the real big moment when they jumped up above everyone was right here between 2005 and 2010. And then since then, they've just stayed in that second place position. Japan was the former number two country back in the year 2000 and they've actually gone down a ranking wasn't that long ago really where Japan was supposed to be China everyone was worried in the US that Japan was going to pass us up also because China exploded that means that Germany went down one ranking as well there's the French that can't even figure out what spot they want to be in because they went from fifth to sixth to back to fifth to back to sixth to now seventh place that they've been sitting in I guess the UK has been doing like kind of a similar cycle as you can see probably the most interesting on this map though is India who started off in 13th place and again between the years of 2005 and 2000 
10, they jumped four or five spots. Then after that, they jumped another two spots, and they jumped another spot and another spot. They're now in it's, it's fifth place, and they're probably only going to keep on going. They have so much population. I guess I should say India goes up, but Brazil is pretty entertaining. They started in 10th place in the year 2000. They went down to 11. In 2005, they jumped all the way back up here in 2010 for 7th place, then they went down to 9th place, then they went down to 13th place. They pretty much now just one rank below where they started 23 years ago. They're in 11th place now. South Korea also having some pretty crazy jumps. For such a small country, that's still really impressive. Australia also a pretty small country, but they've been really consistent. Mexico started at 9th in the year 2000, now they dropped down to 14. Look at the little tiny nation of Switzerland, they're still going. Now this is just largest economies in general general by GDP, but then there's comparing GDP per capita, PPP. <laughs> which is like average number each citizen is making. Switzerland is number one. It's kind of like that. I mean, that's the best way I can put it. Saudi Arabia was actually number one in the year 2000, and they've really been dropping hard. But again, that's just because their averages are going down. The US was actually only third on this list. Uh, now we've been pretty firmly in second. What's interesting is China has such a large economy, but GDP wise, uh, they're all the way down in 17th place. Like on average, each Chinese citizen is only making like $21,000. I think this is in dollars per year. A couple other places doing quite quite nicely. The Netherlands, Germany, Australia, Canada, France. Japan is another nation that has a lot of money overall, but they tend to be kind of low on this list. Also, India in 20th place. They're all the way at the bottom here. It's a really cool way to visualize this information. I like it. It's like a race. It's like a ranking going on. Disney park attendance versus all the other top theme parks in the U.S. Pretty much everyone else has to combine here in the U.S. to even come close to how much Disney parks make. And actually, if you look at overall Disney's profit as just a company with everything included in it's mainly their parks that's like keeping them good right now. They're not doing that great overall, but their parks certainly help. I guess I should have been showing their annual attendance at 28 billion. Meanwhile, all the other theme parks combined only at 11 billion. And this is with more attendance on this side, 79 million. Again, this is being put all together though. It shows just how powerful Disneyland and Disney World are. Apparently Universal is not like maximizing their profits somehow. I'm surprised Universal isn't making as much money and I'm surprised Six Flags is. And also how is SeaWorld doing? this good. I've not been to SeaWorld in like 25 years, I think. Cool to see Knott's Berry Farm somehow popping up. Big thanks to my patrons. Destiny. 9,000. Drew needs to pay his taxes. Why am I doing Karina this? Best John. Girl. Denver. Jack Traven. The Annoying Friends. Inquisitors. Good old Caleb. Australia is real. I am not a paid actor. Luxembourg. 564. Patrick Dye. Subscribe. Subscribe to the Drew. Mexican Ralphie. Ralphie. 760. Become a patron by checking the description down below.